Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, El Daet Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, I Basilian Kurios Hotios, O Pantacreta, Basilios Basilian Kai Kurios Kurio, Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon, Isun Ton Kurion Pantacreta, Kurion Numahagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding the very purpose of this life, which is to glorify Lord God the Father to the highest, by walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to become the people wherewith we could say that Lord God has put a mark of a seal on us as slaves unto the Lord. We cannot serve the Lord if we aren't slaves or born slaves to the Lord. God the Father in the church age calls every believer not only just to be a born slave but also to be prisoner unto Christ. Keeping these things in mind as we are learning from the word of Lord God, particularly from the chapter of Mark chapter 12, we read there, they were the slaves whom he has sent. And if we don't become the slaves of the Lord, then we are not really the workers of the Lord. The slaves of the Lord knows the Lord God face to face. So that Amos 3 says, He shall not hide his secret from his prophets but rather he's going to reveal them who are his servants. In order to know Lord God face to face, you have to go back to the original languages of the scriptures. Much of the people today having a sense of panic or having their talks to be worthless is purely because they haven't known my Lord God face to face. When we know our Lord our God face to face, we will have the vigor and valor like Moses, though he was 120 years old. And even there you look, Moses being called to be the servant of the Lord. So dear brethren, the things which Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, using the privacy of our priesthood through rebound, let's come back and communicate the mind of Christ, which is the burden laid down upon every bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in making disciples who have joined as disciples to make them to grow up as grammatias or scribes the word to use more specifically in matthew 13 52 so that ezra was already scribe isaiah was a scribe and now you have to be as a scribe in deuteronomy 17 18 
as he said if you are a king you need to write a copy of the law of the word of god and writing the word of lord of god is called to be a scribe but we have now the completed canon scripture in the 66 books and we need to learn them not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera but rightly dividing the word of truth we need to exegete the passages we shall come back and continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word reserved and kept for us in eternity past we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the lord god infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace to learn the word Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message which are prepared and kept for us on today's state in eternity past. Though we don't deserve it, earn it, or have to think, have some caliber in it, O Lord, it is purely your grace that you have been chosen us to be still kept alive on this earth to do your work and also to know thy word, which is our life. As we study these things, Father, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. As we were looking yesterday about the bond slaves unto the Lord, it is an essential factor to understand, as Isaiah chapter 65 goes to teach, that the slaves of the Lord God will not talk worthless or idle words, neither their labor, when they have done that labor in the presence of Lord God, as he writes for us in Isaiah 65, besides they don't talk worthless words, neither the thing that they get is that they never get panic things or make it to become tremble or make it to become worried or palpitation in you. The, read, the, the word what we read over here in Isaiah 65.23 surely teaches to us how the ministers of the word of Lord God ought to be. We shall never labor in worthlessness. And if you aren't a slave, take it granted, dear brethren, you have left your entire life to those things which is not at all to be counted in the sight of the Lord. So what does a slave do? Up to what extent they are really worth enough? We read some of the verses for us to understand clearly in the passages of Psalms 119. When we look upon those verses, it clearly emphasizes to us the importance of what a great slaves we need to be in the Lord. In verse number 136 of 119, he teaches to us the burden and the pain of the one who really loves the word of God. He says in verse 136, rivers of waters run down my eyes. The word rivers for us is pelek, that is like a channel which has been used as an irrigation stream. And what they go through, he says, the waters, that is literally you weep. And he says, run down, that meant to say they descend. From my eyes, the reason why he uses physical eyes, because we have the five senses, you know, and the first sense which operates the most is the ear gate. Have you not heard? Lord our God said, If you have hear, or he that hath in hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The first sensitive part for man is the ear gate. And the second one is the eye gate. The same thing what we read about the disciples talking about my Christ when they said, We handle the word of God. Though they were with him for three years of ministry or three and a half years of ministry, they couldn't realize the things till they could get into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, when they were in the day of Pentecost. The ten days of what he breathed from the, age, from the day 40 to day 50, that is what it sustained them to be in a place when he's going to begin on the Pentecost. If he wouldn't have breathed upon them the Holy Ghost of God, they wouldn't have bounded together. So from the day of Pentecost, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, begins. So here also we read that the great purpose of our life is to understand the scripture through 
the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Without the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, or Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the scriptures. So he says, rivers of waters run down my eyes. I in your eye gate. The first one, your gate, and then the eye gate. And then you have lot many things, particularly to understand what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught them for those three years of his ministry. And later on they handled him, he says, but we now have to handle the word of God. This is what our life is all about. But what is happening? The verse of 136 in Psalms 119 has become a reality to those who are really preaching the word of God in exegesis. But for others, they are ridiculing the Lord. They are mocking the Lord. They have rejected the word of the Lord. And they are practicing those things which is no way concerned to the Bible. If Christ our Lord our God is the head of the church, we have to have the teachings of Christ in the pulpits, not the teachings of men. So he says, the reason why rivers of waters run down my eyes, he says, they kept not thy law, shamer, they did not guard, they did not protect. Later on, they haven't come up to obey. So what did they do? They couldn't make up a hedge. When there is no Shamma, then there will be no Shamer. Shamma is what you hear to obey, to protect and to guard. Shamer is what you put a hedge and keep and reserve the word of God for the things to come. That's what you preserve it. But they haven't preserved what? Nothing but the Torah, then existing the law. But now for us, the complete can of scripture from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. The same thing you have in verse number 158 of the same passage. I beheld the transgressors and was graved. And what you beheld, have you ever inspected who are the transgressors? The word transgressors are the people who act deceitfully, who deal treacherously, who are faithless, who are the people called to be always in the standards of making offense, transgressions. They are unfaithful men. Have you ever beheld those unfaithful men? Because you yourself do not know the doctrine, you who yourself do not read the word of God, so how you could really beheld in your eyes the people who are really transgressors? You know why you're not grieved? The word called to be kot in the Hebrew, kivut or k-double-o-t in the phonetic spell. The word meant to say to be having loathsome activity in you. You know, have you ever seen? If you have a putrefying source or if you have any diseases which is giving you all the time that loathsome smell or if you have a dead body beside you, could you eat the food? How does it smell? It smells loathsome. The same thing over here, you should have that loathsome attitude in you because when you look and inspect their transgressions, therefore, dear brethren, with Lord God, there is always the truth which we need to reign. With him, there is something what the word of Lord God teaches is nothing but the Holy One. With him, he is holy, so we need to be holy. He has put on the clothes of a new man, Endikai Sunekai Hosetis Tesalatia. He has given us something great and unique which hasn't happened in the past. Therefore, he has called us to be sanctified and kept apart for the Lord's work in the church age, called to be the called out ones, our ecclesia. And when we look upon the minds of these people, we find these are not the bond slaves of the Lord. And over here he says, why I have been grieved, why I have this loathsome diseases in me or the standards of having such anthropopathia conditions in me. He says, because they have not, here the word is shamer again, not kept the word. The word over here is imra. And the word imra is nothing but every word of Lord God which has been given through utterance or speech or command or promise. And we have lot of promises. We have lot of commands. We have our life in the Bible. Therefore, dear brethren, in Ezekiel chapter 9, in verse 4, which is a known passage for many people, it says for us, Lord God said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of the Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men. And who are these people? He claims that sigh and that cry 
for all the abominations that have been done in the midst thereof. The first sign of a slave to be Lord for the Lord God is that you will have the sigh and the cry for all the abominations. The word sigh is called in the Hebrew enak, and that meant to say groaning in pain or in grief. And much of the people today don't understand these things. They have been just going through in their life in the standards to say that they're really doing great things. But no way, dear brethren. But you should be very capable of understanding what is the great pain, what is the great groaning, what is the great grief in his heart, what is called to be anak. What is that activity like a mourning? You know, what is this mourning? If anyone dies, your dear beloved one, more than that, you have that grief and pain and mourning and weeping and wailing, beating your breast. More than that, you have to have this pain. For what? For all the abominations that are being done in the pulpits today. And why are these people, they go for such pain and groaning or mourning or groaning in their heart? Because they love the law. They love the glorification of the Lord God. But as far as these people they have concern, they don't have the groaning or pain. You know why they don't have this groaning or pain? Because they are using the name of my Christ in making business. But as far as the disciples, which they have to be looking upon the time, training them up to become grammatiers, by intensive training, teaching them from original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and making them to the glory of God, they fail. They want only them to attend the church weekly ones. They want to establish those things which are in the Bible, no way concerned to be in the practices what they perform today in the pulpits. Therefore, they don't have groaning. If you have a sigh and a groaning, that is what the word sigh we call to be enak. That is groaning and the word called to be grief, the word called to be mourning. If you don't have this groaning, and if you don't have this cry, anak, enak and anak, A-N-A-C-K, enak, that is groaning. And anak is lamentation, shrieking lamentation before the Lord. Today, how many people are having such shrieking lamentations before the Lord God? How many of the people are really having a cry before the Lord God to see the practices what they have been done do not match the word of God and much of the people are led into astray and much of the people have become destroyed as the word says in Hosea 4 6 lack of knowledge but the will of God the Father none to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory first Timothy 2 4 and how much of the congregation is really matching to these words and how much of the practices in the pulpits of the present Christendom really looking into these words? When will you grow up to use the wine fat? When will you sit upon the tower which has been built and given to us to be the slaves of the Lord God in doing the work of Lord God as bond slaves to Christ or servants unto the Lord? In order to have the seal of the Lord God upon you, you have to be sighing and groaning or crying, anak and enak. A-N-A-C-K at one end and A-N-A-Q at the other end. The two things which you find in Ezekiel 9.4. First, groaning, mourning, wailing. The second one is greater than that, what you call to be as a cry, you meant to say the great word which says lamentations. How much of the people are really having such lamentations when they look upon the practices in the pulpits which do not match the word of God? And these people will perish. The people will not be fed with the right word of Lord God, but rather they are being squeezed from you, your milk, your blood, your flesh, your wool. And why is it so hard hearted for you not to read the word of God? If by reading the word of God, by that we meant to say, Anagonisco, when Christ our Lord of our God says, if you read this knowledge in, in, in the book of mystery epistle called as Ephesians, the word is called anagonisco, to read, to expound, to analyze, and to know. And you cannot learn by the things as a moron who preaches, saying that 
he met an old man, 75 years old man, and that man was reading the Bible, and he said to one of the idiotic moron person's son, even he claims in his testimony to say, that old man came to me and he said, read the Bible, I used to read 12 times in a year, because one month once I used to finish the Bible. And when there was an enemy attack upon that 75-year-old man, they came and they saw that this man was reading the Bible and they left him and gone. And now this idiotic fool encourages you to read the Bible. You know what will happen if you read the Bible without having proper knowledge about dispensations, which has to be the basic doctrine among what we preach today in our pulpits. You will jumble up yourselves the things that are in the past, the things that are happening right now, the things that are in the future. Because the things what we have now is enlightenment rather than endowment of Lord God the Holy Ghost. The things what we have now is a complete review of the things which are going to come in the future and we have the Bible to teach us why we are here and where we will go after the rapture and what things are required for you to be qualified for that purpose in the Lord. And how you need to be faithful till the things have been done, says Titus 2, 11 through 14. And in verse 15, he gives a command without having any doubt, without having any confusion in your mind, you preach with authority the things that have been committed unto your hands. And how many times we have been given this great warning in the Bible? If you are a bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the first thing, you should be the slave. You should be the slave to look upon the ways of this people as weeping prophet Jeremiah was. The way what we call him sighing and crying, Enoch and Anak. The both things what he did. And he was being said in Ezekiel, whether they hear of phobia, you don't mind, you go ahead in preaching the word of God. Whether they love to look it, whether they love to have it, whether they love to hear it or reject it, you continue doing the work for what I have called you. And why they sigh and cry, the word we use in the Hebrew, anak, A-N-A-C-K, and the other one called as anak, A-N-A-Q. So anak and anak, he says, well, for what? He says, for all the to'eba conditions. Do you know what is this to'eba? This is called to be all wickednesses, followed by every mannerism of disgusting things which are as good as great abominations in the sight of the Lord, which is not as good as abhorrence. My soul abhorreth. You know, you are designed to breathe oxygen to your lungs. If there is anything of a stinking smell, or if there is anything of a pollution in the air, do you think you can smell it? You cannot smell. And that makes a abhorrence. That makes a disgusting thing. You are designed to breathe on oxygen, so you need oxygen and a fresh air of oxygen. Apart from that, whatever you love to breathe in will not match your lungs. The same thing with our life as well. After believing in Christ, the Greek word pneuma, which has been used for Lord God, the Holy Ghost, we have been designed to live in the Spirit. We have been designed to walk in the Spirit. We have been called, if ever you walk in the Spirit, to march orderly in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly leading you, guiding you for the purpose of producing in you the character of Christ and the glorification of God the Father. The sole thing right now in the church age, it is not tongues, it is not miracles, it is not healings after the completion of the can of scripture. This temporal spiritual gifts have been seized off. The permanency which is in force, the bona fide work of the pastor teacher, the bona fide work of an evangelism, the pastor teacher, poem and didascalias, which is nothing but to be a teaching shepherd in training you up what is the word of God. And this will the people upon whom Lord God will put a mark. These are the people exactly of Malachi 3:16 through 18, what we read. These were remembered in the book of the law. And there we have great things, what they were looking. What they were looking, we have for us, if you have your Bible, to open it up to Malachi chapter 3. These were the men where they were a record, which has been recorded. Then they that feared Lord God spoke one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written, the word called to be Zikran, memorial. And why it was been written before him? For them that feared the Lord and 
that thought upon his name the two things always having yare reverence to the lord god and that the thought the word thought is nothing but kasab which meant to say to reckon and to calculate and to have the great judgment to be taken up so in simple words it meant to say the plan you know what is the plan of lord god for us what you are matching you know what they have made they have made my lord and savior jesus christ as one among the men on this earth therefore they don't have the reverential fear they consider what is christ it has been so much delineated the same thing when you open up your bible to isaiah chapter 1 really it should prick your hearts to understand up to what extent this man they have made their life ruined so he says for us here are heavens copying from Deuteronomy 32 when Moses was calling to be the witness because he knows very well after his departure they will fall for great sin we read that and give your own earth because for the Lord had spoken I have nourished and brought up the children and they have rebelled against me it compares to the analogy of animals even by Joel the prophet the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib but Israel does not know my people does not consider Are you really ignoring the word which is called to be yada, getting acquainted with the Lord, or have we had this word called to be considered, which is nothing but bina, which is called to be understanding? Do you have this? Have you ever acquainted and you have understanding? But the ox and the ass indictment, referring to the believers, referring to the people who are still to be taught or make them or make to understand the missionary work. The ox and ass indictment. they know their work they know their master script but you my people israel know not he says a sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evil doers children that are corrupters they have forsaken the lord you know what does he say the first one sinful nation and then people laden with iniquity the word iniquity is even nature what we read and the word laden is nothing but kabod which is having great laden great sin a seed of evil doers again what is that seed it is called to be always evil zara and followed by the fourth one children of corruptors first is a sinful nation people again yami what he meant to say the nation being caught together the first one sinful nation that is called to be as goye which is called to be a nation in that you find the second category people and the seed of evil doers the third category and again he comes to fourth ben which is nothing but the sons who are corruptors the word corruptor shakat and the church age street has been filled up by this standard if we would consider the christendom first it would call to be sinful christendom second one the people who are laden with iniquity that is nothing but the pastor teachers or the so called idiotic reverends and doctorates what they come and in that they have their own progeny called to be seed of evil doers so that they could run and work it out for the next generations to come and in that what you find you'll find the children of corruptors these are the nepious breed who haven't even come to look upon the adult standards of the word of god what they will do they will forsake the lord the fourth one after this four categories of the people under that nation what they do they always proceed they go to do those things which is absolutely evil so he says these are the people who have forsaken and what is the sign it is a sign that they have left the lord and what they do they provoke the holy one and what is the word provoke you know they say despise they blaspheme so they blaspheme the holy one of israel unto anger the word anger is nothing but again naat the hebrew is very clear which says naat again naat and then he says they are gone away backward they have become strangers they have become for me foreigners and where they have gone they have gone behind my mind and what is the word mind over here thinking of bible doctrine no rules and regulations as per the word of god behind the word of lord god they have gone long back so he says why should you be stricken any more you will revolt more and more the whole head is sick the whole heart is faint this is what it happens when your thinking goes wrong there will be no circulation of bible doctrine in your mind so your whole head he calls comparison to the rosh which is nothing but for you the thinking pattern what it is it is of anxiety it is of disease it is of grief it is of sickness 
and today the people should understand why they have become weak and sick until to the point of death because they don't have face to face lord of a god you know to hold the page over here and come back to Deuteronomy chapter 34 the dying discourse what we look upon Moses beginning with verse number 4 and the Lord said unto him this is the land which I swear unto Abraham unto Isaac and to Jacob saying I will give it unto thy seed I have caused thee to see inspect it with thy eyes but you shall not go over there if you would consider you shall not go to the land flowing with milk and honey that was a land of a great one but what it happened they rebelled and they caused it to become a land of great sin a land which should be for the word of god has become now a land for all ritual practices of this human brain what all the mind of man can conceive what all the things that they have thought to be practiced they forsook the living lord god as we read yesterday forsaking the living water they went along to build up hew up themselves broken cisterns so it became so he says i will not go i will not make it to enter over there looking upon the standards in the present pandemic covid sicknesses if you would understand lord god the father would never make those men who are really having the seal of the lord god as a mark upon their foreheads math uh, ezekiel 94 in comparison again you find them in the book of revelation also but the analogy over there what i meant to say if you have your anak and anag your sigh and cry for all the disgusting things what they're practicing before the lord god and they have been put upon the book of remembrance malachi 316 through 18 then you will no way enter into the standards of what we call sicknesses to reach to the hospital beds in this covid sickness you have to prove yourself that you are the servant of the lord how you would be the servants of the lord we were reading from isaiah 6511 the servants of the lord they will hear the voice of the lord god that is they learn bible doctrine and after learning bible doctrine they are in a place to be the missionary work for the lord when lord god calls he they hear when they speak they respond and the servants of the lord god will be called by a new name he said and the servants of the lord god will get themselves acquainted says job 22:21 but we have the word for us to understand it is not acquaintation but sakain that is to make our lives to be the bond slaves of the lord god and to serve him and to be the stewards and ministers of christ without having that purpose in your life there is no life at all for which you think you're still alive if you're thinking you're alive to the world just forget it the very purpose of your life is not to be alive for the world the very purpose of your life is to witness the word of god you're born to be witnessing the mind of christ So he said, "You shall look into it, but you shall not enter into it." And people might be thinking, "What a great chance they might have lost to enjoy the deeds of the flesh!" You know why you enter into the sick beds? Why you enter into the things pertaining to your your illness? Because of the sin what you perform. Sin and sickness goes hand in hand. They are of the same coin, having two faces. Lord God the Father is so clear in Exodus 15:26 followed by the same chapter of Exodus 26 in verse 14 and following he teaches there very clearly command my word or obey my word guard my word and observe all the things that I have given to you and he says none of the sicknesses shall come upon you none of the sicknesses which are brought upon Egypt the same thing what he says for us grieve not squelch not wax not lie not to lord god the holy ghost which controlleth you it is he who alone who can guide you it is he who alone who can direct you he is our guide he is our mentor he is everything without him we can do nothing so when he is everything for us how is it that we still reject the word of god and grieve lord god the holy ghost and why is it not you will enter into the sick bed do you think you have time to spend in sicknesses in a casualty bed when much of when much of the bible doctrine has been given for us to be communicated you know what you are ending up in casualty bed in your sicknesses as a pastor teacher is clearly meant to say the way how david said to uriah the hittite go and rest with thy wife and an answer given by uriah the hittite should prick our hearts it really should prick our hearts if you have your bible to second kings chapter 11 the favorite passage is what we need to learn from the life and the discourse of 
David. So we find saying that the things pertaining to not Second Kings, it has to be in Second Samuel chapter eleven. He says that in particularly verse number eleven. This is the breath of the words which every believer should have such kind of a zeal unto the Lord. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in the tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie down with my wife? As you live, and your soul liveth, I will not build this thing. Do you have that zeal today? If you are a true born slave of the Lord God, you will have a zeal. If you are a born slave of my Christ, you will have this great work in your mind always, thinking, how could we rest in the casualty beds? Then how you should be far from the casualty beds? How you shall have that you shall not even touch close enough to such casualty beds or enter into such hospital beds or even to look upon such hospitals. Do you know how? Sin not. You may be tested like Job, but sin not. Because Job answers back to Lord God in the sense to his friends. The things what he spoke was upright, but the things what their friends spoke was not matching to the glory of God. So what we do? Rivers of waters run down from your eyes because they haven't kept the law. You have a loathsome griviness in you, looking upon the minds of these people. They don't have the word of God. You don't have this because you are a part of them. The same thing over here as well. How you will not enter into the hospital beds because you sin not. Why? Because the ark of the Lord God, when he says that time ark, it is now every word of Lord God given to every believer in the church age because now every believer's body is a temple of the living Lord God of hosts. We shall not let go the very breath of our lives or the next breath what we take to sin. And we shall get every thought into captivity for Christ and establish back our foundation to the word of God. At least you have your life, you have your tents, you have your tabernacles. In you at least you be prepared to meet the Lord. Though you may not have ample of the people to join you, as it was in the hand of Acts chapter 11 when we read in verse 20 and 21, the hand of the Lord God was with them and the people grew up. Today, the Christendom, including his own wife or own children, do not carry their cross every day and follow my Christ in becoming the work of the Lord. Far less you think you will be added up many people to your messages. For sinners, you will find a lot of people being subscribers. But for being the men to the word of God, you will not find. When you compare to the word of Lord God, you will not find. Because their hearts are not clenched before the Lord. Anything that which is unclent and which is reigning in your mind, take it granted, dear brethren, you are not qualified. You will be entering into the sick beds. And you don't have time to spend in sick beds. You are not called to spend your time, your life in the sick beds. You are called to spend your life in the word of God. You are not called to spend in the sick beds. You know how the sickness begins. It begins when you have negligence to the word of God and to the work of God. And much of the people today, they know very well what they are neglecting. They are neglecting the primary work in making disciples of all the nations in the great commission given to us. In order to make them disciples, they should be graduated as grammatias. And in order to graduate as grammatias, the bona fide work of the pastor teacher should train them up to meet the Lord God face to face. And how do you meet face to face? Do you think you should have a trance or a vision in the present Christendom? No, you have to train them up in the original languages of the scriptures. And we find a record over here for the life of Moses to say, there was not a man where with Lord God the Father would talk to them face to face. And now it is a given for us, the veiled ministry for them. But now we have unveiled ministry for us. The things pertaining to the Holy of the Holies and the Holy Temple has been torn apart. And now we have something of a ministry in 2 Corinthians 3.18 when we say that you have given a great privilege to go from glory to glory. 
But where are you ending up? You don't really understand the purpose of your ministry in Christ. And what is that you know you go face to face? He read in Deuteronomy 34.10, There was not a man like Moses. And in everything what he kept, his eyes were firmly fixed upon the word of God. He was a man who spent his time twice, 40 days before the presence of the Lord. He was a man, when he was in the tabernacle, he would go any time, even the high priest would go yearly once. But this man would go any time to the Holy of the Holies. And why it was so? What is the privilege of this man? Because he kept all the time Lord God as number one priority. And what will happen if you keep Lord God as number one priority? He says, though he was 120 years old, his eyesight was not dimmed. And second one he calls, his vigor, his freshness. His spiritual vigor was great, thus his physical vigor was also fresh all the time. And therefore Moses has been called faithful slave among all the house. And we are called to be the slaves of the Lord. Can we have the testimony like Moses? Do you have any zeal in your life? You know, pride of life, what we call. On this earth journey, people will think, if that man is able to earn so much of money, he can make one house, then I will also try to make more money than him. I will make two houses. You know, that's how the man is on this earth. He has zeal in unnecessary things. He has zealousy over the things which vanish in comparison to his fellow mate. But the Bible stands record. Can you be like Moses? Can you be like Paul? Can you be like Peter? In 1 John 2, 6 we read, it is no longer Paul, Moses or Peter. You have to be like Christ. Can you prove your integrity? Can you prove your fidelity before the law? This man was not sickened. This man's eye was not dimmed. This man's health was not deteriorated. Why it was? Because he spent his time all the time face to face before the Lord. And today, why you suffer is that you haven't learned the word from the original languages of the scriptures. That's why you suffer. That's why you end up to say, our life is 70 years, our life is 80 years. Foolishly, men will quote that in the book of Psalms to teach such and such. If you read carefully those passages, it will teach to you that is purely for those men who have sinned. But those who don't sin, they have a great life. And even the Hebrew school of of thought, the word Zakain, which has been used for the elders, in Spiros Odiotos Bible, he gives an explanation of this word. He says there very clearly that till to the age of 80, in India you find the age of 60 to be elder citizens or citizenship senior. But there, till to the age of 80, they are not senior citizens. And till to the age of 80, they are free from sickness. They are free from every mannerism of ill health. And why did they have that word Zakain? If they would have clearly followed and obeyed the commandments of Lord God, if they would have really made their life worthy enough to the calling of Lord God, they wouldn't have found that till to the age of 120 as Moses was. But what they did, they did not spend their time in the word of God. They did not spend their time in the presence of God. They rebelled. Therefore he writes in Deuteronomy 32, Heaven and the earth are witnesses, because he knows very well the people will rebel. It is not an assumption because they knew their hearts were hard-hearted when they went for 40 days. They made themselves a golden calf and that was the seed which the mixed multitude which was with them. And when they entered into the land flowing with milk and honey, for the people it might be a land of great wealth, great prosperity, great peace. But for the Lord God it was a land of sin. Do you know why you call it as a land of sin? When they went, he writes in Deuteronomy 6, when you go there, when you relax, when you forget the Lord God, the same thing he writes again in Joshua 22, 23, 24 chapters. You forget the Lord. The same discourse we find in the book of Judges. Every time they forget the Lord God, they cry unto the Lord God. Lord God sends them a prophet. 
or that time the rule of the church, to deliver them. But today in the present Christendom, there are not enough men to cry unto the Lord God to make you all to understand what it is that we need to walk face to face before the Lord. Neither were able to find the shepherds who could be in the standards of having a great sigh and cry for the will of God, to do the will of God and to do the work of God. You're not having that. And what the men require today, prosperity, blessing gospels, a temporary relief from their sufferings, but not a permanent relief from their sin to be eradicated from their lives or to be erased out from their lives. How you be dead to sin? He says in Colossians 3, 5, put to death necrosate. The things pertaining to your old sin nature, what happens if the other person is greater than you in the worldly life? The one who is rich in the word of God is the richest one, even in the heaven, in the earth. The greater you accumulate the word of Lord God in, and walk according to it, that is to do, and then you preach, you are called to be great, not only now, even in the things to come. We have to have such kind of a zeal and goal to the Lord, not the zeals of this earth where the people would think, I need this, I need that, I have achieved this, I have been to NASA, I have gone about to the moon, I have made my home there. Who cares? Foolishly, the world is running behind, which is not even worthy to be thought of. These are the men who are building their lives like the Babel Tower. They thought they could go to see God. It's a midst of confusions. The life what they're living, the life what they're calculating, the life what they're thinking, it's great. It's absolutely confusion life. It is not a life that could be counted worthy at any by sense. It doesn't make any sense. God called you for his glory. God called you for his purpose. God called you to witness his word. But you're witnessing the world in you. You're not witnessing the word of Lord God in you. If you want to witness the word of Lord God, it will be absolutely to renovate the standards of your thinking first. So for Nismas, that causes you to live righteously. That makes you to have the great word called to be as Eusebian way of life. That's the entrance. When you pass the test, you go now to become the bond slaves. And in the time of the bond slaves, you have been given the great duty of Lord God to understand that you have the seal set upon your forehead. You know, people are worrying a lot about the triple six. You know how foolishly Satan has diverted your minds. The things which will happen from Revelation 4 through 19, they think it will be done now. It is a time during the tribulation period, which will be taken after the rapture of the church. People are much worried to have triple six upon their forehead and they think the Antichrist has come. This, that, you know, oh, so many videos you will find in the YouTube, which is diverting your mind from the true issue called to renovate your thinking from the original word of God. And they're tate setters, they're rapture makers. But no one is prepared to meet the Lord. The reason why they're suffering such kind of a hypocritical way of life is purely they don't love the Lord, they don't love to spend the time before the presence of the Lord as Moses was. Twice he went. And Bible records there was not a man like Moses again. Why it has been recorded there was not a man like Moses again. The reason is very simple. He spent all the time in the original languages of the scriptures, which we call face to face, pani im, pani im. You need to encounter the Lord God face to face. Preach them original languages of the scriptures, Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and much of the errors which has been taught in the pulpits today, within a millionth of a second, it will be vanished off, it will be corrected off. And how we need to teach? Dispensationally. Iconomas. The church is separate from Israel. The things they have done is different. The things what we are doing now is different. The things what will be done in the millennium will be different in comparison to the seven years of tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel. And what are we now? We have the ministry of enlightenment. We have the completed canon of scripture. We have called to be as having entirety, holocrinas in James 1.4. We have something great. We have something which is absolutely brilliant. 
We are sandwiched between the two advents of my Christ. We have been given the highest and the best privileges of all time. And thus Moses was not allowed to look upon that land, was not allowed to enter, not to look, but not allowed to enter, because he knew very well it's a land, the people may think flowing with milk and honey, a great land. But since he was a minister for Lord God, servant for the Lord God, and he writes the reason over there, because he did not honor my word. You haven't made my word to be honored in the midst of the people, therefore I'll not enter. The same thing will happen over there in the land of milk and honey when we look into the history further after Moses' death. Till to the time, though Isaiah writes everything in his book, people will look upon his incarnation, people will talk about his crucifixion in Isaiah 53, the millennium state. But in the book of Isaiah, he writes everything, detail, much of the verses we find for the New Testament quoted from the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, particularly ending up with verse number 2, he stops and he closes the Bible. But when we come back to the original book in Isaiah 61, we find a lot of things when he says, I will make up the prophets or priesthood to come down. And we are right now in the church age to be the priesthood for the Lord. And we have our bona fide work in Isaiah 61, what we need to rebuild back, what we need to construct back what we need to be the ambassadors to the Lord and what work we have to do for Christ. You have a lot many things over there which has not been read. It got calculated in the book of Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19. But you're still having the work to do only the two things. You're working to look upon the preaching of deliverance and you're looking upon the repentance of mind of the gospel of my Christ. You are preaching deliverance and repentance, but you are not having the right word to renovate the standards of your thinking. You haven't made disciples. You haven't called them to be the things what the word of Lord God demands. When we look upon in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, followed by Colossians 1, and where we find for us in, again, Philippians chapter 3, where he writes for us that we have to march ahead for perfection, for the high calling in the Lord. Therefore, whatsoever things on this earth they are, he counts them to be like a sheer of, of a human excreta. And yet, much of the people don't love to look the land flowing with Bible doctrine in the present Christendom. So Moses was not allowed to enter because he knew there will be the people who would practice even after his departure, much worse things to come, including the things and the thoughts what David did. In Uriah the Hittite case, the thing what he did displeased the Lord. A man, when he said, the ark is in the open tents, my army, the army of, that is what Israel and Judah are in the open tents. You know what David would have said? Let's look this matter afterwards. Come first, go and join the army of the Lord. Can you leave Lord God over there in such kind of an open field? The same thing today in the present Christendom. People have left my Lord's word to blaspheme among these unbelievers by deceiving themselves not to know the real word, not to walk with Lord God face to face. Can you prove you're really walking with Lord God face to face? Then go back and learn the original languages of the scriptures, not the translations which don't even come to the shadow of the foundation of the scriptures. Can you say you're walking with the Lord? Face to face. So Moses was not allowed. But we learn a lesson from for us over here. If you're a true faithful servant like Moses unto the Lord, Lord God knows how to protect you in spite of all odd pandemic sicknesses or plagues or circumstances what these people they're looking now. Because they know very well, Psalms 34, 7, the angel of Lord God encampeth them and he makes them or delivers them to do the battles of the Lord God. He gives such kind of a great work to Lord God. And he has given and bestowed upon us, but we still think we are not even ready. But he has qualified us long back. 
So he says for us over here in Deuteronomy, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, or against Bethpor, but no man knoweth of his peculiar unto this day. <laughs> we find that in the book of Jude, where Satan comes, and the things pertaining to the angel of this one, what to be called as Mikael. So we find, and Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dimmed. This is the lesson what we need to learn. His eyes were constantly fixed upon the Lord. When you have your eyes upon the Lord God, when we read in Proverbs 3, what is the eyesight to your eyes? He says, the word of God. What is the marrow in your bones? He says, it is the word of Lord God. What is the health to your flesh? It is the word of Lord God. Since he kept his eyes all the time upon the Lord, his eye was not grown dim. As Peter was asked to walk on the water when Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ was walking on the sea, when he removed his eyes from the Lord, he was drowning. What a simple lesson we learn from that incident about this Moses as well. Moses always kept his eyes upon the Lord. In spite of all the rebellions we look, they would come to chide against him. But where Moses would go, he had only one answer, the Lord. In spite of all the wilderness troubles that you get right now in the church age, where you will go for your help? Where will you go for your shelter, refuge? You have to always have the word of God, which is the completed can of scripture. Being taught in the original languages of the word of God, you need to study, you need to have a zeal for that. If you don't have that zeal, if you don't have that great burden to learn the word from the original language of the scriptures, your eyes are not upon the Lord. You may have your word in the translations, but the translations will not give you the essence. The purpose-driven life for the pastor teacher is to exegete this passage, is not even to let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. A man walk face to face before the Lord. A man who taught the virginal languages, the word what he begins in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, he says, Lamad them. Manthano plus Didasco, the two Greek words equivalent to that word Lamad. That is, make disciples by teaching them the word of God. He knew why it was to teach, because in order to know face to face, Lord God is the life of a great vigor, Wala. It was a life what Moses, Moses lived. And Joshua was the man, and followed by Caleb, who say, saying that though I am 85 years of age, I have in me the vigor of 40. He had a different spirit, because the spirit was called to be the bond slaves of the Lord. And the point what we need to emphasize for you, do not panic for the sicknesses that the world is going through and stop the work of the Lord. Now is the time for us to fight the Lord's battle to the highest as never before. And how do you panic? You panic because you have sinned. Use rebound, get back. You will not die, you will recover. But if you still hard heart in your heart and do not do the will of God, you will perish. With Lord God there is no excuse. With Lord God there is only one thing which you need to learn. I repent, have your change of mind, come humbly unto the word of God and grow up in the grace of God. He grants you more grace to those who are humble believers, he said in James 4, 6. But you come with an arrogant attitude. You say, what is there for us? It's a pandemic sicknesses, many people are dying, many people are doing this because of such and such reasons, and how God would protect. The world may be thinking in that way because the world is old. <laughs> it gives you even a futurity of millennium wherewith you cannot even calculate. Think what will happen after the rapture of the church. 
what will happen when the church is been gone through and out of the tribulation and what will happen in the millennium and after millennium what will be the eternal state everything is been clearly recorded in the bible which is so advanced it will not get your minds to think bible is outdated from past to future eternity past to eternity future everything has been recorded for us so in order to walk by faith and having that always before your face that is before your eyes and walking face to face in the original languages of the scriptures you will be the man whose eyes was not dim called to be kaha the word dim is nothing but to be darkened to be faint to fail to grow weak to grow dim or to have any mannerism of rebuke because you are grown dull you know when you grow dull when you don't keep your eyes upon the lord when you don't get every thought into captivity for christ that's the reason you call to be grown dull if you don't have your eyes set upon the word of lord god then you're growing to be dull no matter whatever you may be you will grow up to be dull take it granted dear brother much of the people today don't understand why they are dull why they have been looking into misery as their life obscurity as their life or having such kind of a miserable standards in their thinking because they haven't looked upon what is the real word of god though might have had promises for them to remember in their mind though they might have quoted but they haven't really looked upon the depth of the word to move from bulomai to telema will bulomai is what you have been just looking but lord god said in matthew 11:27 to whom ever to whom so ever i will i will give and to whom is willing the people who move from telema from bulomai to the standards of telema will but you haven't come to do the telema will of god the father then you have lost it and much of the people don't understand today what they're losing in christ how much they have lost in the law It's a very great sad thing for us to note the order and the structure of this men what they're performing in the pulpits So dear brethren why do your eyes grow dim why they become kaha no word of god what your eyes search your eyes search for your stupid things on this earth whatever is visible and today if you would look much of the people are shackled to their smartphones their eyes search that which is not true their eyes are looking for unreality things if anything you look if anything you observe if anything you hear if anything you have to think this is great in the youtube for this or for that the first thing what you need to ask is this real what they record and keep for you in the youtube the instances that have happened the things which are strange for you you love to look some creativity things you love to plan some automobile industry you love to learn but have you ever thought of making your life to look for the futurity have you ever thought of having the seal of lord god upon your forehead Satan loves to blind your eyes or make the things kaha dim in your eyes by taking out your mind from the word of God and your eyes from the word of God. The main strategy of Satan is to not to give you the word of God. It loves to give you everything on this earth apart from the true word of God. For that cause it thought first we should destroy the word but it couldn't. It cannot do anything against the creator and the one who wrote the Bible, Theonostas, God breathed scriptures. So the second thing what it does it does to it goes to destroy the pulpits the pulpits where they haven't taught the right word of god and what is happening today in our pulpits no word of god and how do the pulpits work now false pastor teachers the word calls them to be evil workers dogs and he writes in philippians 3 be aware about dogs be aware about this false man evil workers and today 
Satan is successful in the standards of maintaining in every pulpit false pastor teachers, false reverends and doctorates which are no way concerned to the Bible. If they were really into the word of God, they would teach you not to become your eyes dim, not to take away your eyes from the word of God. And that's what you need to diligently seek, search and learn. How you want to be free from such sicknesses, how you want to have a great health, how you want to do the work of the Lord God, why you have been given this great peace. By making up to look upon the word of Lord God as number one priority, that's it. And apart from that, if you love to do anything, your eyesight becomes dim. But here, Moses' eyesight was not dimmed because he was the servant of the Lord. That's what we look over here again further in these passages. So he says, no kaha and his natural force. The word natural force is nothing but leak, which is called to be his freshness, his vigor. And the word originated from lak, L-A-C-H, that meant to say, always fresh, always undry, always green. So what it was? His natural force was abated. That meant to say it was not escaped. It did not disappear. It was always there with him. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. That's what it is. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Here you find the word laid hands upon him. So here this was a time before the complete of scan of scripture. But when once the complete of scan of scripture has been done, it is what Lord God the Holy Ghost giveth, that bona fide gift at the moment of salvation. And then he says, And there arose not a prophet. The word meant to say Nabi'in. The word arise is cum, established, since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. So, dear brethren, we look over here in verse 5 again, coming back to Deuteronomy 34. So Moses, the title for him, the servant of the Lord. The title, Abed, it goes to be from Abad. The origin of the word Abad goes to be like a bond slave in a bond service. And what, est what extent will be called to be Abad? It goes to be from Ad. And what is that Ad? It is called to be the witnesses. And the Ad goes to originate from Ud. And that is called to be the repeated witnesses. So Moses was called to be the servant of the Lord God, even as the people over here in Malachi 3.16 we read, he says, the thing that they feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And he says in verse 17 of Malachi 3, they shall be mine, said the Lord God of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God, that is called to be the word Abad, again slave, and him that doesn't serve him. You know, this is the difference. If you are not a bond slave to the Lord God, he says in that day they will come to know. So what did Lord God say? He wants to put a seal, the seal upon those people who love to be in the standards as we look, that they sigh and they cry for the abominations that are done in the midst. In the midst, in the sense, that time, the people, the way how they were living. So he says now, rivers of waters run down my eyes because they haven't kept my law. Then who will be the people to keep the law? They have to be the people called to be slaves unto Christ. Dear brethren, what is the purpose of your life? Have you ever thought, if you don't join us, you should be unprincipled disciples to the Lord. If you don't grow up to be slaves as scribes to the Lord, never you will reach the only stage what Lord God calleth to Paul, prisoners unto Christ. And as long as you fail to learn to grow to such standards, your life has no meaning at all. Moses was not allowed to enter to look to to enter the land flowing with milk and honey. So you also, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic sicknesses, you will be not allowed to enter into the places called as casualty beds because you don't have time when the Lord's battle is so intense, 
once again to establish back in our pulpits the original language of the scriptures to be taught. When we have so much of work to be done, how is it that we could think we are going to spend our time in pandemic sicknesses, even to enter into the hospital beds? God the Father knows, and he has sealed and kept his men who will be serving the Lord. And that is every believer in Christ. He has called many, but he has chosen few. The reason is many, though they have been invited to the work of the Lord God, they were not interested in performing the great glory of God. Therefore, they love to spend their time in the details of life. If you see the unseen through the word of God by walking face to face with him, and if you do the things pertaining to the word of Lord God, not only just walking face to face, but always making up your eyes fix upon the Bible doctrine, your eyesight will not dim, neither the health of your flesh will become dry. The freshness, the vigor and the valor will be always green. And that what is happening today in our pulpits, including the so-called shepherds of forgot their duty. If you have the bona fide gifted given to you by Lord God the Holy Ghost at the moment of salvation, you cannot spend your time in lies. You cannot spend your time in cheating the people who really have to do the work of the Lord. You would in return lay down your soul to the flock. You would teach them what it is in the exegesis. You would train them up what is in the isogogics. You would lead them in the categories of great exegetical study with dispensations. But we know very well you haven't been the slaves of the Lord. If you are the slaves of the Lord, you would show forth looking upon the time. The grape juice has a wine fat operation. They would be the people to build up the towers and you would be aware about your enemies and you would be always waiting upon the Lord to have your vigor and valor which will not die, which will be always green. And you know the burial where Moses was been buried till date, no one knows. But the thing what he dishonored, we read that was the reason he did not enter into the land flowing with milk and honey. The thing what Moses dishonored, the word of God, that is the fate of many people when they enter into that land, they rejected the word of God. At least Moses of the Lord. There was never a man who arose to whom he would see face to face. We read the Bible. Maybe that is the reason he did not want him to enter into that land, because he served the Lord. And he is called faithful servant. If Abraham, father of faith, he is a faithful servant in all of the house. Faithful in doing what is the will of God. And such faithful men always they have eyes upon the Lord so that their eyesight will not be dimmed. They will always have face to face before the Lord so that when they are standing before the judgment seat of Christ, when God the Father would ask, what have you done? Though I have given you the translations, that was not the end. You should have gone ahead further through the mediating link and you would have gone to learn the word from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and you would have thought that's the bona fide gift why I have given. And in John 1.18 he said, Exegioma is the order of the pulpits. But you rejected, you did not come from Bulomai to Telemai, you did not learn what is the will of God when he said in John 7, 17, they that are of doctrine will know. In order to know the doctrine, what to do the will of God, you have to move ahead from the standards of Bulomai to Telemai will. And much of the people today in the present Christendom don't understand that. That's how the world is running along having not to move from Bulamai to Telema, having not to know and desire more to learn and to understand. You know what? Like the way of Queen Sheba, when she comes all the way, when she heard a lot of things, she was not satisfied with them. So what did she do? 
she came to look by her own self whether these were the things so or not and when she come back and when she looks and when she hears and when she makes her life she says what i have heard was only half that's what it happens if you are looking your translations that's what you are looking only half you need to make up your journey in the original language of the scriptures to learn more greater than Solomon is here said the Lord God and he claims Sheba to stand against you at the judgment seat of Christ because she came all the way a long journey to know the word of God <laughs> but what long journey you have on this earth to go then to seek the Lord God to kneel down in his presence do you think is there any hard journey for you to every day kneel down in the presence of the Lord God for over two decades and ask nothing but only one prayer to god god i want to have a right and true fellowship with you all the days of my life teach me the truth do you think will you find that journey hard every day to spend your time upon your knees and learn the word of god that's how god the father calls many chooses few he knows who are the people who will pass this exam like the way when job was tested he knows how to give these people as called to be servants of lord god He knows why the eyesight will not be dimmed, neither the vigor or valor at any time in this life will be abated. Because these are the men who have made their journey to learn more. They made their life nothing but to learn Bible doctrine. They made their life to have nothing but the Word of God as number one priority. And since they have made their life to be in those standards, God the Father will be proud of them in seeking such men to provide them the real word. but for you today don't have such journey we have giving you every day come back and take it up we are blowing the trumpet whether the hear of obi our duty is to blow the trumpet we are blowing it up come and listen we are not asking you to subscribe to our channels because we don't want any name of fame we want you to know the truth that's it because the servants of the lord god will not speak worthless idle words neither they cause you to have this palpitation you have this palpitation when you know the truth that you haven't done the will of god and yet dear brethren how many days more you don't want to be the slave unto the lord it's your life you are not answerable to me neither am i answerable to you are answerable to lord god as i am also answerable to lord god when he asks the question have you blowed the trumpet and that's what our duty is to be the born slaves growing up from the standards of usabian and to become prisoners unto Christ the prisoners are the prisoners unto Christ being born slaves are safe they will not enter into any sicknesses because they have their eyes always fixed upon the lord and they have always to walk before lord god face to face in the original language of the scriptures yeah brethren think over these issues life is too short at the responsible to lay down upon our shoulders is too large and which way you want to go you can decide because it's your life we cannot go against your evolution in this world you will find at every pit nick and corner men who are in the standards of second corinthians 4 4 or second corinthians 11 verses 4 and 5 as well in second corinthians 4 4 blinding your eyes in second corinthians 11 you will find satan already transforming itself into the angel of light in order to look and perceive over them you need to have the knowledge of doctrine to look anything or to buy anything on this world you need to have an expertise level of knowledge isn't it if not you will think i would ask such a man an opinion such a man this such a man that and you take your opinions and then you go back to an expert and then afterwards you love to decide on that article whether to take it or buy it or to lose it without having expertized opinion you cannot then how much more when it comes to your spiritual life you don't know the word of god ask god the father he is an expert he he has given you already the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost he is the only paraclete guide he is the one who is going to lead you But don't grieve him, squelch him, wax him, or lie unto him. But rather be controlled of him. 
And yet what happens, dear brethren? That is what you need to face before the presence of the Lord. And every day it's our duty to proclaim the word of God. Because heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool. Where can we build a house for him? Where can we give a resting place for him? Until unless it is in our soul and spirit. And that soul and spirit to walk before him face to face demands the original languages of the scriptures. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. With our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to belittling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care so thon lagan. Herald the word in season out of season, because the diamond from witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from witnesses in very infinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses, and what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely, divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O oh Lord, to learn the importance of becoming born slaves unto the word. Father, through this message, O oh Lord, help us to really walk always before our eyes, not to be dimmed by keeping upon you as Peter failed. Help us, O oh Lord, not to fail, but rather to be always keeping our eyes upon thee and the lord at the same time to walk face to face which is nothing but in the original language of the scriptures and learning from them help us to realize your plan and to glorify you on this earth do section father we pray may lord get the holy spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message in christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen